So we have this suggestion to uh, use three suggestions here. We said to use the doctors to promote our brand or the hospitals to promote our brand. We saw that in the graphic, the doctors was uh, here uh, about 30%. Or 25 or 30 percent of people went to the Mayo Clinic because their doctor recommended it. So we're going. They didn't already talk to the doctors yet, so we talked to the doctors and uh, asked them to cooperate on would they recommend the hospital. Maybe ask them, do they think their customers would be interested in going to Mayo Clinic? Okay, their patients. Do they think it would be an advantage for their patients to go to Mayo Clinic? Uh, we had on the other side, you suggested to uh, work here as well, get these people to uh, recommend to more of their friends or more of their relatives, right? So what research were you suggesting to do for this area? You said to find out about their hobbies, their interests, that kind of thing. Yes, um, if I didn't have the details, specific way to, mm. uh, to run. So you mean make more detailed, a detailed uh, study of our patient satisfaction to find out more about them. Mm. Then we can use this, perhaps we can use a new way like social media or other things to also promote this way. Okay. Uh, we had mentioned about just advertising, trying to find some niche. We have a kind of target market of the high income individuals from South America or the Middle East or so on. So we could try to target those people, maybe the airlines which fly there or some sports events like Formula One or that kind of thing, right? Uh, to increase the brand awareness. So. <coughs> We could also, after we do this kind of thing, we can also work again with the insurance company. Currently, not many people know about Mayo Clinic, so the insurance company might not be that interested in selling, when they're selling their product, highlighting Mayo Clinic. But if we can get more and more awareness of Mayo Clinic, then we can ask the insurance company also to help when they're selling the insurance to people to highlight Mayo Clinic is the best hospital in the world. So it's a selling point also for the insurance company, right? When they're selling their insurance policy. So this could also help us to increase our awareness. So do you have any questions about that part? So then let's move on from market research to branding. Global branding. What global brands do you know? Coca-Cola, Apple, Apple. No. <laughs> so we're going to talk about global branding and advertising. So first, we'll introduce about the branding. So uh, do you know P and G, Procter and Gamble? Yes. So they have Gillette. Gillette is men's uh, product, right? So, if we think about truly global brand, Gillette could be like a global brand. They use the same kind of uh, values, benefits, and so on. Uh, for example, they use the same ad campaign all around the world, like, uh, do you know, the famous sports star, global sports star. Who is a, do we have many global sports stars? How many sports stars do you think that you guys all know? The same sports stars? Maybe three. There's not that many, right? Do you know Ronaldo? So maybe Gillette will get an advertisement with Ronaldo shaving himself. They can show that in every country, the same advertisement. Okay? Uh, Gillette, the best a man can get, they make the image of masculinity, that their product is a very masculine product. Uh, so they use that, that kind of thing and they use the same brand name. Gillette is the same all around the world. Do you know Gillette? 
Yes, it's the same in every country. So also Apple, as you mentioned, is a very truly global brand, right? The same, very similar advertising in every country and uh, products and so on. But many companies are uh, modify their logo, their ingredients, their product in different countries. So Coca here is Coca-Cola, right? We think of Coca-Cola as, as a truly brand, global brand, but although it's recognized all over the world, it can change its logo. The logo is different. The language is different. The ingredients are different. Okay, It's slightly different. In Korea, they put more sugar, much more sugar in. I don't drink any carbonated drinks in Korea because it's too sugary. <laughs> compared to Europe. So we already explained the advantages of standardization, economies of scale, development costs. So Gillette just pays Ronaldo a lot of money. That's why they can pay Ronaldo a lot of money, right? They're going to use this advertisement all over the world. They don't have to design another advertisement for every country. If, I, if Gillette had to design an advertisement for 150 countries, with 150 local sports stars, and uh, it could cost more than Ronaldo in the end, right? And maybe not, not, might not have the same impact as a global sports star. They also use Rafael Nadal or some Tiger Woods, somebody like that, right? So, uh, sometimes we need to create a local brand because a company already has the name in that region. So you're from the Czech Republic. What famous brand do you have in the Czech Republic? Skoda. Hmm? Skoda. Uh, a famous brand which is a local brand in the Czech Republic but is a global brand normally? Yeah. Uh, Skoda. Mm. Skoda cars. Mm. But I mean that Budweiser. Uh, yes, maybe. Plus that would come more. Mm. You have Budweiser beer in the Czech Republic? Yes. Mm. Is that Budweiser or is it Czech Republic? Yeah, it's Budweiser but the Czech Budweiser. Yes, so Budweiser, Corona had the same problem in, in uh, the US. There was already a beer called Corona in the US before they went there, right? So Budweiser has that problem in Czech Republic. There's already a uh, beer called Budweiser. So in the end, Corona purchased the brewery. Because the, the American Budweiser mm -hmm. had a problem because they, they named mm -hmm. their brewery after the Czech brewery. Yes. So did the American one, were they able to sell the American Budweiser in the Czech Republic? Or do they have to pay some money? Uh, I think they sell it in the Czech Republic, mm -hmm. but Czech Budweiser have to sell the Czech Budweiser in America uh, under the name Czech War, I guess. Mm -hmm. It might be changed. So they made they, some negotiation or agreement? They lost the okay. So anyway, in the US, this Corona had to buy this other company. So, sometimes we can have this problem. So we have these 10 commandments of global branding. <clears throat> so let's have a look at these 10 commandments. Number one, understanding the global branding landscape. So one international market is not the same as another uh, international market. Uh, see if I can zoom this. I don't think so. So, uh, we have differences in brand development, consumer behavior, competitive activity, legal restrictions. So, we may have to change, customize our things. Avoid the shortcuts in building branded brands. So, build from the bottom up, creating awareness before brand image, and developing the right sources of brand equity. So we need to, first of all, make people aware of our brand before we worry too much about the image or strategy. Establish a marketing infrastructure. Build the marketing infrastructure from scratch or adapt and modify existing infrastructure in other countries. Embrace integrated marketing communications. We'll talk about more later. Integrated marketing communications means 
that our marketing is, is all connected. We have internet marketing, magazine marketing, billboard advertisements, public relations, and so on. But integrated means they're all working together. They're all on the same theme. Uh, establish the brand partnership. So we can choose some marketing partners that can help us. So we can uh, join two big companies could join together, like uh, McDonald's also often joins with Disney when they release a new movie to uh, give some free toy in their thing, right? Or we can just hire a local marketing company to help us out. Balance the standardization and customization. So this is globalization we talked about. We looked at the Gillette is just doing standardization, right? Just the same advertisement of Ronaldo shaving in all the world. Yeah. But we looked at the vodka company, Absolute Vodka. They had some standardization. The idea is the same. It's a the bottle in the shape of the local landmark. And then just some customization. So packaging and brand name can be standardized. Distribution channels and communications can be more customized. So it depends on the product also. But for example, the uh, let's say a washing up liquid is different from a razor. Razor could be more or less the same disposable razor all over the world. But some people prefer a different smell or a different type of washing up liquid, or some people wash their dishes in the machine or so on. So. We have to look at our product. Balance the global and local control. So we're not just making all our decisions in the headquarters, or we're not just making all our decisions in the local country. We're making a balance between that. Establish operable guidelines. So we let marketers everywhere know what to do. We define our brand. So if I'm Gillette, I'll tell them our brand is a very masculine brand. and. Our slogan is, the best a man can get. So we're very clear to everybody what kind of brand we want to make. Implement a global brand equity measurement system. So information from the global brand equity system lets marketers make the best short run and tactical and long run strategic decisions in each market and leverage our brand elements. Leverage means improve or increase, or use this, use this thing. So we can uh, use our brand name and trademark as a source of brand equity. So for example, if we are selling something which is uh, L'Oreal, we should show some L'Oreal sign on that, even if we have the local brand name, because we want people to know that it's associated with this overall global brand. So these are some uh, commandments from this uh, the internet book on global branding. Do you have any question about this? These kind of commandments. The important one here is again balancing the standardization and customization. So then let's talk about the international advertising more generally. Branding is part of the advertising. So integrated marketing communications we mentioned. It's composed of uh, advertising, sales promotions, trade shows, personal selling, direct selling, public relations. So we have uh, all of these things together. So we have to make these work together. Mutually reinforce means they help each other. They reinforce each other. And we want to sell our product. So for most companies, advertising and personal selling are the main, the most important uh, components of this. And the goal of most companies is to achieve the synergy. Synergy means when we put two things together, we can get more than just two things separately. So you're very good at uh, writing, you're very good at presenting. 
So if you do the project by yourself, it's okay, right? You're not that good at writing, but you do a good job of presenting. If you do the project, it's, it's okay because you're good at writing, but you're not that good at presenting. But if you guys join together, the synergy means you're more than some of your parts. You do the writing well and you do the presenting well. In the end, the presentation can get more than double the score. So this is what synergy means. So we want to make these kind of synergies between sales promotions, public relations and advertising. So we'll look at a case study later. But one example was uh, a company which was selling wallets. They made the world's biggest wallet. It's like some promotional activity, right? Sales promotion. Do you understand the world's biggest wallet? <coughs> There's a Guinness Book of Records, right? Do you think that's a good idea for making sales? Brand awareness, make the world's biggest wallet. In the US, they like putting that kind of thing on the news. Yeah, they'll have some reporter, here I am with the world's biggest wallet. <laughs> In Tennessee, why right, these people made the world's biggest wallet? The, what company are you from, right? Then they link this with the internet. They have some internet advertising, right? Then they have some. They could have some competition about that. Guess how big the world's biggest wallet is, or how much it weighs. If you enter this competition on the internet, right on their web page, you can win a prize. So that's just an example of trying to tie together. The different uh, try to tie together our different marketing activities, and that is called integrative marketing communications. So, integrated marketing communications, we could talk about more, but that would be more just the general marketing course. This is about international marketing, okay? So, we're going to talk more about advertising in the international international area. So uh, we have first to talk about sales promotions. So sales promotion, I mentioned uh, some making this world's biggest wallet. We want to stimulate consumer purchases and improve our retailer or middleman effectiveness and cooperation. So if we think of a normal case of this product sampling, you go to eMart on Saturday, right? To collect your price, did you go? Huh? You did? Collected your prize? Huh? No, I go there for the scouts. <laughs> uh, do you sample any products there? That's a sales promotion, right? They give you this product, try the product. If you like it, you can get, usually they give a discount, also is another sales promotion. Or a coupon, you get some coupon with 20%, two for one, those kind of things, right? So it's just a short-term effort. Uh, we're not going to have a two-for-one offer for long, just a short-term, or sampling, that kind of thing. Or we're not going to make it the world's biggest wallet every week, just one time, to achieve our specific objective. So we have to think about uh, the different markets. What kind of promotion is going to be good for them? And we have to think about the media limitations, and so on. So, an example is that Unilever were selling their Ariel. Ariel is washing clothes, clothes washing uh, material, liquid, right? In Egypt. So they did a puppet show. Do you like puppet shows? Do you understand puppet shows? Yes. What is a puppet show? With dolls. Yes. Hand or just. Yes. So they found that in, meat in Egypt, we already mentioned, people spend a lot of their time outdoors. The TV wasn't a very good way to promote their product. And uh, a lot of the people in the rural towns, they have low literacy rate, that kind of thing, right? So they decided to send a puppet roadshow. They sent a, a truck around and some people with the puppets and they made a show in the village and the puppets were set, you know, promoting the aerial and then maybe they give some free sample of aerial and the people started to buy more because they uh, before it was quite expensive more expensive than the local product but because of the puppet show people understood more the benefits 
of buying the more expensive like one like it wash you use less to wash more clothes and so on so when we are doing some promotion in the international market we have to think about uh, do we have some media limitation for example if I'm selling children's toys if there is no uh, TV station for kids it's not going to be easy to advertise on the TV right I need to find another way to promote my my uh, product for the kids <coughs> then we have uh, public relations so do you want to work in public relations? No, why not? Very hard. PR, right? So usually we have some crisis or something bad happened. PR will try to cover it up, make our company look good. Or PR, our company does some charity, but nobody knows about it. PR will try to let people know about that. Okay. So we want to make a good relationship with the press and other media to help us communicate our message to the customer, the public, the government regulators. So Firestone is a Japanese company, they make tires. In the US they had uh, 100 deaths because of faulty tire. Do you understand tire? On the car? Yes. We have, uh, what company do we have in Korea? Hanguk, right? So anyway, they had this kind of faulty tire, they called back the tire, then they did the Japanese traditional thing, which we can also see these days with Toyota when they had a problem, or other Japanese companies, they would go in front of all the TV cameras and they bow down and they say, it was all my fault and I'm very sorry, right? So that was Japanese cultural way a hundred years ago of PR. That works well in Japan. But it doesn't work well in the US. US people were not interested in the apology. They want to know what is the company going to do, right? So the PR that works well in one country may not work well in another country. And then Japan, this Japanese company made things even worse because they're a global company. So in Saudi Arabia, also people died. And Saudi Arabia stopped using these tires. They made them illegal. And then, Firestone took this case to the World Trade Organization. They said that you shouldn't be blocking our tire, and they actually took this case to the World Trade Organization to say Saudi Arabia was behaving unfairly. So this was very bad public relations by Firestone. Right? This came out in all the media that even though their product was defective and killed some people, they were taking a case against the country who banned their product. Okay? Then in the end they they recalled uh, their products and other Japanese companies have learned a little bit from this situation. They know that they can do the PR in Japan, they can apologize to the people and bowing and so on. But in the US they need to immediately recall all the products, pay money to compensate the people, right? Use a different type of way. Uh, Nike also had a problem with their global workplace standards. As you know, Nike had some bad PR in the 90s about using the child labor. You understand child labor in other countries? So Nike took out some big advertisements in the newspaper saying that, no, we, we are not uh, doing this. We are actually a nice company. But they actually put some false information in the advertisement. So they were taken to court in the US for false advertising. And again, this created a media storm. Do you understand media storm? What is a media storm? Do you understand the media storm? Do you understand storm? So what is a media storm? Yes, all the media is covering your story. It's like a storm. All the media comes down on top of you, right? with their microphones and their cameras, and it's all over the news. So Nike uh, made what was originally a problem for them even worse by making a newspaper advertisement and putting false information in the newspaper advertisement. So that was kind of PR disaster for Nike. So uh, 
One, we want to, on the other side, apart from avoiding the crisis, we want to build an international profile. So we want to have some good stories about us in the media, that kind of thing. We, we can, one way we can do that is by corporate sponsorships. What kind of companies sponsor the, the Olympic Games or the World Cup, the world's two biggest sporting events? McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Gillette, we probably saw, right? Some other companies. So if we do that kind of sponsoring sports events, it's helping our PR, right? Helping our public relations, people have a more positive opinion of us. So it depends on the country. Uh, some countries have a lot of newspapers. Some countries don't have that many newspapers. Some countries have a lot of TV stations. Some countries don't, but overall we need to try to make a good relationship with the media and try to see that our company is seen in a positive light. I don't know if you have seen these days, it's a relatively new thing, but uh, nowadays newspapers and magazines are putting in stories about companies, which is not an advertisement, but the company paid them to do the story. Because it's get, times are getting more challenging for the newspapers, because a lot of people are getting their information online, some new free website or something like that. So one way of getting revenue is that, like a hotel or somebody will, they will write a story about the hotel. So the hotel gets some like PR, right? There, and the newspaper gets some money. They have to put just at the bottom in very small writing this uh, story was supported by this company or something like that, right? People normally don't notice just at the bottom. Okay, so that's a kind of a sly way of advertising, right? It's not an obvious advertisement. It's not as clear as the other advertisement. So when we're advertising internationally, we want to uh, interpret or translate the qualities of our products and services in terms of consumers' needs, wants, desires, and aspirations. Are the consumers' needs and wants the same in every country? If I think about a camera, are the consumers' needs and wants the same in Africa, in Germany, in the US, in Korea? What do you want when you buy a camera? Quality. What is product quality for you? That's the point. Product quality. What people think is product is quality can be different in different countries. So, what is your idea of quality for a camera? Korean, any Korean student can tell me. Pixels. Pixels. Yes. So technology. Technology and the definition of the picture. Yes. Russian students. When you buy a camera, what do you think about? The same, but also maybe rear and so. The design of the camera, does it look nice? In China? China and Taiwan. We can put together China and Taiwan. Just to be controversial. When you buy a camera, what do you look for? You don't like photography in Malaysia. What do people want when they buy a camera in Malaysia? They already. already said the same as Korea. What about in, in uh, Denmark or Europe? Functionality and design. I think that will be easy. It must be just no pictures. Salon just very easy, very fast. Easy to use design, yeah. and design. Yeah. Okay. But I'm to answer what are you asking, I think Koreans or generally Asians, they are maybe more looking for these selfie mm, turning displays, something so you can see yourself. Mm. We are not that crazy about it. You don't like selfies? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever taken a selfie? Yes. <laughs> but um, I don't do it every lunch, every dinner, every day. Do you take? A lot of selfies, you Korean students. Do you have? Do you own a selfie stick? 
Hands up if you own a selfie stick. <laughs> yes, selfie stick is relatively new, right? It was on the TV program in Korea, so everybody started to buy that. So the point is that when we're advertising in Korea, we are going to talk about the consumer needs and wants, the pixels, right? It has this many pixels. When we're advertising in Europe, we are going to focus on the design, or in Russia, right? It has this design. So we have to understand that translating, translating qualities into the different countries. So also we have emotional appeals, symbols, persuasive approaches should follow the cultural norms. So uh, what does the green color mean to you in uh, Europe? What does the, what, if you see the green color, what do you think of? Fresh. Fresh. Fresh and environment. Yes. What about in Malaysia? If you see the green color, what do you think of? Green mm. color? Grass. <laughs> what about in Russia? Also nature. Nature. What do you think of? I also think nature. Nature. Right? Green in the, in the yes? I would think Malay. Because the Malay always wear the green clothes. They like green. Who are the Malay? Mm -hmm. I'm not Malay. Mm -hmm. Who are the Malay? Huh? So what? Who are the Malay? Who are Malay? Yes. Can you explain to the class? Who are the Malay? Oh, Malay is the Malay, Malaysian. Mm -hmm. um, Malaysia has three, three people. Malay, I Chinese people. and Indian. And I'm Chinese. You saw your Chinese Malaysian? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now we can make China one country, right? Taiwan, China, um, Chinese Malaysia. Do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? No. <laughs> Why not? Why yes. Taiwan is a special economic district of China, right? Hmm? What do you think? Okay, I'm just joking to make some controversy. Okay, so anyway, Taiwan is the biggest problem in US-China relations, right? US is supporting Taiwanese independence, but China are not happy about the US attitude. So that's the biggest issue between the world's, one of the two main world superpowers. So, uh, green can mean different things. In the tropical area, green means like disease, right? Because if you cut your finger, you can get some green color or that kind of thing, right? So people see green as the opposite of Europe, as fresh. So uh, we have other symbols I talked about before in China, where in the advertisement, you shouldn't, ch in the US, it's okay to challenge yourself and kill yourself, right? Because you are your biggest you are your biggest uh, obstacle, enemy, right? Yourself. But in China, it's not okay to make that kind of advertisement, right? So we have to think about uh, these different things, and they should follow the culture of the country that we are in. So we have to, first of all, perform the marketing research, specify the goal of our communication, what do I want to communicate? The camera is functional, the camera has a good design. Find the best message for the market segment. Select the best media. Uh, different countries have very different laws for the TV, for the radio, for the newspaper. Yes. When I was in the US, I was very frustrated because I watched Braveheart. Do you know Braveheart? A movie. It takes about two or three hours. In the US, it took me six hours to watch the movie. The US, they have 10 minutes of movie, 10 minutes of advertisement. 10 minutes of movie, 10 minutes of advertisement. Right? In different countries, in some countries, they just have every 30 minutes, they just have one minute. In Germany, if you want to advertise on the TV, you have to pay one year in advance, and they, they don't tell you whether they're going to show in the winter or the summer. Their schedule has to be decided by August, but they, they won't 
confirm exactly when your advertisement will go out. So every country has different uh, media, right? Some countries have just one newspaper, some countries have a lot, right? In Korea, do you have one main newspaper or a lot of small newspapers? In Russia? Can I advertise in one Russian newspaper which reaches all of Russia? A lot of people buy, very popular. Maybe it is better to do in magazines because newspapers are not very popular in Russia. Okay, so cultural difference, people don't quite read the newspaper. In China, do many people read the newspaper? I heard a lot of Chinese people only understand 70% of the newspaper. They don't know 30% of the characters. <laughs> is that true? Um, newspaper. If you read the newspaper, is there some character that you don't know? Uh, yes. Sometimes, yes. Because there are so many Chinese characters, right? Yeah. They have different alphabet systems. Chinese newspaper is just a, a political tool. Okay. Of the government. Okay. You're on the video now, remember? <laughs> okay, so the newspaper is more uh, giving, it's a run by, you mean it's a state run newspaper, right? Owned by the state. The state owned newspaper, so it's going to give some favorable story to the state. In Ireland, our TV station is owned by the state. So it also gives some favorable story about the government or the state. So, uh, again, we mentioned about the child's advertising. If we don't have a children's TV network, maybe it's not a good idea to advertise on the TV, right? Uh, compose and secure a budget, and then execute the campaign, and then evaluate the campaign. Did, did the campaign go as we planned? What can we uh, improve? for the next time. Okay, so uh, let's discuss a couple of questions just to check our understanding. Uh, what is just what is integrated marketing? So discuss with your partner. So if you want, you can give me the case study now. 
Thank you.